Adam Fisher, Valley of Genius, The Uncensored History of Silicon Valley, as told by the hackers, founders, and freaks who made it boom. Delve into the revolutionary history of Silicon Valley as Adam Fisher takes you on a whirlwind journey through the breakthroughs and cultural clashes that shaped this technological epicenter. Valley of Genius uncovers the stories behind Atari and its founder Nolan Bushnell, the groundbreaking work at Xerox's Palo Alto Research Center, and the rise of Apple, eBay, and Google. Meet the personalities behind these computing giants and experience the mix of innovation, determination, and serendipity that propelled the Silicon Valley boom forward. The Rise and Fall of Atari Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari, created a freewheeling business with like-minded techies that resulted in the invention of one of the first video game consoles. The company was thriving with their simple yet successful game, Pong, and their hedonistic culture. However, after Warner bought the company, they struggled to reinvent themselves, key engineers left, and a culture clash between corporate owners and the freewheeling company atmosphere caused problems that ultimately led to the company's downfall in 1984. Xerox's Untapped Potential Xerox's potential in the computer industry was overlooked, which led to missed opportunities and the rise of another company. Xerox, a company best known for photocopying, made a significant breakthrough in computing in the early 1970s when its Palo Alto Research Center, Park, built the first computer with a visual user interface. The Alto had features we recognize today such as overlapping windows, icons, fonts, and different menus, innovations that enabled painting, animation, and fonts on screens. It even had a poorly working mouse that allowed navigation on the screen. However, Xerox leadership was skeptical of Park's groundbreaking innovations. Researchers went against Xerox's corporate culture of professionalism by creating hippie graphics on the Bravo, a machine with 256 different colors, something no one had seen on a computer before. Xerox failed to capitalize on this untapped potential and returned to its core business of printing. Meanwhile, a young and slightly crazy Steve Jobs visited Park and saw the potential these innovations had. He took inspiration from them and created the first Apple computer. Jobs saw that the future of computing was communications, and believed that personal computers would be on every desk. Apple's early growth was partly due to Xerox's untapped potential in the computer industry. In conclusion, Xerox's influence on the computer industry was significant, but unfortunately, its potential in computing was ultimately overlooked. This led to missed opportunities and the rise of another company, Apple. The Birth of Apple Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak were the genius minds behind Apple. Before they started their tech company, they worked together building and selling illegal, blue boxes that tricked the network exchange allowing users to make free calls. Jobs' smart business mind saw an opportunity to sell the blue boxes, which was the start of their partnership, but it wasn't clear if they would start a business together. Jobs then landed a job at Atari, but left to travel to India in search of a spiritual guru, and later returned with a shaved head and saffron robe. He worked the night shift at Atari, and brought Wozniak in to tinker with things. Jobs proposed creating a new game, Breakout, knowing full well that Wozniak would do the work. Afterward, Wozniak designed a personal computer named Apple One, and seeing a financial opportunity, Jobs suggested they form a company together. Thus, Apple Computers was born. Changing the Course of Computing Steve Jobs' visit to Xerox's Park Research Facility in 1979 changed the future of personal computers forever. Being inspired by the Alto's graphical user interface, Jobs introduced it to Apple's future computers, which later became known as the desktop, icon, and mouse. The Macintosh computer, released in 1984, delivered Jobs' vision of an easy-to-use, consumer-friendly computer to the masses. With a marketing campaign directed by Blade Runner's Ridley Scott, Jobs presented the Macintosh as a thoughtful challenger against IBM, the dominant computer corporation at the time. The revolutionary computer spoke for itself at its unveiling, and the world was enraptured by its capabilities. 
The Story of General Magic General Magic was a tech company that spun out of Apple in 1990, boasting a team that worked on the original Macintosh computer. They came up with an impressive product, a personal communicator that could perform tasks like email, phone calls, messaging, gaming, and even stocked an app store. General Magic had an idea of a smartphone, a full decade before Apple worked on one. The company had a slightly disorganized working environment, with offices in a building that was empty for 10 years, feral dogs in the basement, pet rabbits that peed everywhere and an engineer who lived in the office. General Magic's device was ahead of its time, with its visual interface, online games, and networking abilities, but it had its flaws, such as poor battery life. The dream failed, and the company shut down, but the engineers went on to play significant roles in developing the iPhone and Android operating systems. eBay's Beginnings The story of how Pierre Amidier created eBay and revolutionized online markets. In 1995, Pierre Amidier, a believer in the inherent goodness of people and the power of markets, spent a busy Labor Day weekend creating a primitive online marketplace, eBay. The platform relied on a simple honor system with no guarantee for buyers and vendors to get their goods or cash. However, Amidier's belief in people's fundamental honesty proved to be correct, and the system worked. eBay rapidly took off, earning more than Amidier's day job within months. Apart from being an online place for selling all kinds of items, eBay introduced the feedback system, allowing users to rate each other's transactions and build a reputation. This innovation was revolutionary in the 1990s since the internet was primarily an anonymous space, and the feedback forum became crucial for eBay's growth. The company went public in 1998, just three years after its launch, and the venture capitalists who invested early made a thousand-to-one return on their money. Although many tech companies have been launched since then, few companies can claim to have made a profit every single quarter like eBay has. Ultimately, the story of eBay's beginnings showcases the incredible power of simplicity, honesty, and innovative thinking. From Map to Domination Larry Page and Sergey Brin's journey from doctoral students mapping the internet to the global domination of their search engine, Google. Larry Page and Sergey Brin were computer science doctoral students at Stanford University. Fascinated by imagining new ideas and concepts, they were working on a doctoral project to map the internet. At the time, the idea of building a search engine didn't feel like legitimate academic research to them. However, their project allowed them to identify the importance or usefulness of a website by the number of websites linking to it. Within eight weeks, the duo built a search engine that was more powerful than any existing ones. Initially, their plan was to license the technology and go back to work on their PhDs. However, their early demonstrations to search provider Excite CEO showed them the potential superiority of their innovation. George Bell, the CEO and owner of Excite, didn't want Page and Brin's technology, as he believed it would make it too easy for people to find stuff, which was not his agenda. He wanted people to stay on his site. This meeting, combined with their failure to license the technology to anyone, made the pair realize that they needed to start a company of their own. Finally, Google was founded by Page and Brin, marking the beginning of short but extraordinary global domination. From struggling to dominating, how Steve Jobs transformed Apple into a tech giant. In the late 1990s, Apple was struggling to survive with a meager 2% share of the personal computer market. Steve Jobs returned to the company and drove the launch of the original iMac, followed by the iPod which, while trendy, did not significantly boost Mac sales. Eventually, the executive team convinced Jobs to open up iTunes to Windows, and the iPod became a major success. Jobs recognized the potential of combining a phone with a music player and developed the iPhone, initially designed as a laptop killer. Despite being criticized as the worst phone ever, Jobs focused on its potential and launched it with great success. The iPhone was initially a closed system, without third-party apps, but the need to compete with Google's Android forced Apple to open up the ecosystem. Today, it's hard to imagine an iPhone without third-party apps, but this innovation was groundbreaking in connecting people and ideas. 
The Story of Facebook's Revolution Facebook began as a unified version of individual dorm Facebooks with the intent of turning it into a proper business. With the mantra of, move fast and break things, Zuckerberg and Moskowitz relentlessly pushed new code to stay ahead of the curve. The 2006 introduction of news feed was met with pushback, but despite this, people were using it twice as much as before. Facebook now holds incredible power as the world's largest online platform, and though some question whether enough consideration has been given to how a small cohort of young males have influenced it, it remains a dominant force in our lives today. In Valley of Genius, Adam Fisher skillfully navigates the myriad tales of ambition and innovation that turned Silicon Valley into the technological superpower it is today. The book lays bare the raw and uncensored stories of development, struggles, success, and failures that shaped the lives and legacies of influential companies like Atari, Xerox, Apple, Google, and Facebook. The journey concludes with a look at Facebook's colossal impact as an online platform, raising important questions about its influence on human interaction. Ultimately, this book invites readers to reflect on the paths taken by these pioneers and consider the direction Silicon Valley will chart in the future.